Now, another hugely successful song was the duet with Julio Iglesias and Stevie Wonder on My Love, which was yet another number one song wow. and sold over 12 million copies. Do you remember doing that song? I re remember doing the duet uh, with Stevie Wonder and Julio Iglesias. And um, I remember it was, it was another session for me. You know what I mean? It was another session. I, I, um, they told me what the studio was and who it was for. And I just went in there and did it. I went home. After that, I heard no more. Now, let's talk about Madonna and the song Like a Prayer. Mm. So walk me through this. You're in the studio to sing as part of the choir. How do you get selected to sing on Like a Prayer, which is, again, a number, another number one song and sold over 15 million copies? How did you get chosen to stand out on that song? Well, um, when I did the recording um, Like a Prayer with Madonna, I got chosen because I was singing with Andre Crouch at the time, singing with Sandra Crouch. And so their singers were there. I was among their singers, Gary Singers, and other singers. And, um, you know, you're there. I think that was like maybe a, a week or two recording. We were in the, in the studio. Um, it was just a week, and maybe my mind is just <laughs> maybe thinking too much. But um, we were in the studio, and um, I don't know. Things just happen. You know, when you're there, everybody's hearing everybody, and then maybe one of the producers or, or you know, uh, Andre, um, Sandra, or somebody else in there. They'll say, um, uh, Gene, do ad lib. Ad lib on this part. And that, that, that's how it was. Just ad lib on this part, you know. So I did. You're being so modest about it, but you truly stood out on the song. In the, vi in the music video, they have someone depicting you because the world may not know that, that it's not you. Mm -hmm. uh, singing your part and it was a huge part of the music video so what did you think about seeing yourself or seeing someone portray you in the music video and why didn't you participate in the music video well the reason why i don't even know if i was going to be in the video number one i didn't know i was going to have a step out no, number two things would just happen but that particular night of that um, recording, um, there was some trouble after, uh, before we left the studio, not in the studio, but there was, um, I, I, you know, I was married to a very, I don't want to call it selfish, controlling man. And, um, He decided that he was going to kill me that night. The last night of the, <laughs> the last night of the recording, he was going to kill me. He even had somebody come in to the studio to tell me. He said he's going to kill you tonight. I'm not going to say his name, but your husband said he, to tell you he's going to kill you tonight. He didn't want me to go back to the studio and record anymore. He wanted to pull me out of music. And I would say that he was a music person with a very, he was part of a very famous uh, group, okay? And, but when we got married and um, we had twins, the twins were probably about 
four, three, four months old, they were old enough for me to go and and work. Um, they they were gonna be they were well taken care of with um, two nannies. So I went to the studio, and he had said, uh, "If you go to the studio, once you have the babies, you can't go back." And so I was like. Uh, I was saying to myself, I don't see how that can happen because <laughs> that wasn't that that that's that's not part of our marriage. I mean, for you to say I'm never going back to the studio, I've been singing all my life. You take this, you take singing and music from me, I will die or go crazy. You know, so he decided to make it keep his word. So when I got home from the studio. Uh, when I walked in the door, I didn't see him. I went right into the area where my babies were and and looked at them and, you know, paid attention to that. But then he comes in the door, and when he comes in the door, you know, the, the two nannies couldn't see where we were. We were, like, on the other side of the house. So we were in the hallway, and he says, um, didn't, I told you not to go back to the studio. And so I was trying to say something, but before I could say anything, um, he used a, a, a military technique on me. Um, he was trying to, to kill without leaving a mark, without throwing a blow. So he just politely um, pressed one of the arteries uh, in my face, around my eyebrow, he pressed that, and all of a sudden it felt it sounded like a train, like I could hear a train shh, which was actually my brain that artery burst. He had pressed that, and so my brain was bleeding. I didn't know, but um, I ended up in the hospital. Um, I ended up from from in the hospital. I ended up in the morgue. So I actually uh, passed away. I don't know how long or what, but I just know that I, the Lord woke me up in the morgue. That's where I woke up at. I remember everything in there. I remember looking to my left and I just saw bodies on stretchers or gurneys stretched out over and I um, I saw them, I couldn't move, I was paralyzed. Uh, my whole left side was paralyzed. So I couldn't say anything, but I did see the doctors over there. I looked and I saw just the, the, the examiners, medical examiners, they were looking at the other bodies and, and they were all had white sheets. I had a white sheet too. But my right arm, I could move it. I just moved it back, moved it down. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Moved it down, and um, I just looked at the doctors, and then finally one of them looked at me. She's, she's alive. He said, she's alive. Oh, my goodness. You're not supposed to be alive. He's looking at me saying, you're not supposed to be alive. And I'm just looking at him because I can't talk. And as I'm... Looking at him, he, he he hunches the others and tells them, "Come over here, she's alive." And he goes over, comes over to me, and um, he's like, "You are not supposed to be alive." He declared it. He looked at me like, "I know you were dead." <laughs> I was saying to myself, "I know it too." With all these up, but I didn't really realize I was in there, you know, at that time. But I knew I was in there. I'm saying I didn't realize because it didn't alarm me. I didn't get scared or, you know, try to run off the, the, the stretcher and I, I, I couldn't. But anyway, God raised me from the dead in a morgue. Okay. And from there, I, I went through many, many treatments I couldn't take care of my children. Um, my children almost got put back in the system, got put in a system, okay? But 
I married into a family of um, a lot of a lot of law enforcement and things like that. And so um, to protect my children, they convinced the courts that he could take care of them because it hadn't been proven yet. It hadn't been proven because he didn't throw a blow. So how are you going to prove that? You can't prove throwing a blow, you know. And it was just me and him in the hallways. So nobody saw him push that artery up under my eyebrow. So when they asked me questions uh, um, uh, in court, they said, just answer yes or no. Don't, don't say nothing else. So when they say, did he throw a blow? Did he, you know, go back and hit you? No, he did not. So it, it um, ended up being, he ended up winning the case. I ended up back with him, with my children, and not being able to walk, talk, or do anything. I was like a vegetable. But I had family members that took me through that. But, um, you know, the doctor said, you'll never sing again. And you won't walk, you're not going to talk anymore. And the Lord took all that away. And the reason why he did, I have to tell you, is because I had to forgive. If you have forgiveness in your heart, it helps you to heal. When you're not forgiving people, I don't care what they've done to you. It, it, it eats you inside. It don't eat them. It eats you. So I didn't want to end up being ate up inside. So I just asked God to help me. I said, if you help me forgive him, I will. That's the only way I can do it. Uh, that's all I can say right now. So that's why you weren't able to participate in the video because you were going through a I was personal trauma. In the hospital, the same night, the last same night, that last night. Yes.